Welcome to my Minnesota rifle hunt recap. I started the season off with bare ground. So I did a lot of scouting and a lot of calling. Uh, a lot of checking out the areas, checking out past areas to see what uh, it looked like for deer sign. And uh, basically looking for sign of a decent buck in the area. And uh, I, I won't bother the hunt unless I know that there's a decent buck using an area. Uh, the odds are just too low to waste time sitting in places where there isn't a big buck. So when I have bare ground, I it, it's kind of my playtime, really. I, I, I move around a lot, do a lot of scouting, check old uh, routes that these bucks take, uh, looking for sign. If I see something really good, something interesting, I'll hunt. If not, I just keep on moving. Um, this season was a case of uh, I wasn't finding anything. Uh, the, the places where I had run into big bucks the previous years just weren't panning out at all. And I ended up actually relocating to a different area altogether, one that I've never hunted before. Which isn't that uncommon for me. Uh, I am very mobile. Uh, that's a big part of my success. I, I don't get stuck in one area. So anyway, for the first five days or so, I didn't have any snow. I did a lot of moving around, a lot of looking, a lot of goofing around, basically. I kind of look at it that way. Um, it can happen. I've, I've killed deer doing that. Um, scouting with a gun in my hand, stopping, making a few grunt calls. It, it can happen. Um, and basically, I'm kind of waiting for the snow. I, I love to play with the snow. I love to track deer. And, and uh, so it's a way to burn time while I'm waiting for the snow. And if lightning strikes and I get lucky, I'll, I'll take my deer that way as well. So anyway... Uh, stories coming up and videos and photos and so enjoy the recap. far the highlight of the trip to Minnesota this year was running into two monstrous bull moose. I was checking out a new area scouting for deer and uh, it was a select cut and it was just had tons of moose sign and uh, I was commenting to myself, man, I'm surprised I don't see a moose, and sure enough, there was a real big bull moose, at least for me, it was monstrous. I've seen moose before in Canada, 
but never any really big bull moose and never really up close and uh, oh I would say for a, a better part of about an hour or so uh, we kind of played cat and mouse I, I kept trying to get closer and closer to get good video uh, he didn't know I was there and lo and behold there was not one big bull moose but there was two big bull moose and they were traveling together and uh, I got some video uh, it was a little trickier to get close to them than I thought and uh, uh, but I did get some pretty good video and eventually they realized that I was there and uh, they didn't really want no part of me so they took off and I'm glad they went the other way instead of coming at me because those things are huge so enjoy the video In 15 days and my best chance at a trophy buck came about halfway through the trip and we got some fresh snow and I grabbed a track and uh, it was a good track I was excited about the track and uh, I started to follow him and uh, he was a, kind of an aggressive cuss he was ripping up uh, brush all along the way small trees rubbing and scraping as he went and uh, oh he didn't go too far uh, I would say about a half a mile and and he ran into a doe in heat and uh, um, there was another buck involved in it too and uh, the other buck had a nice track but not quite as nice as this one and uh, the game began uh, they winded me they had moved down into a cedar swamp and uh, one of the deer winded me and he snorted and I'm, I'm assuming it was a doe um, but I I wasn't even really on him yet I was still sorting out the whole mess uh, at that point in time uh, he had caught up to her where she was with their fawns and uh, there was at least three deer there involved and they were feeding and bedding down and moving around and, and uh, so the whole area was tracked up and of course there was another buck involved as well so um, he made it a bigger mess yet so uh, about the time I was getting it kind of sorted out a deer snorted at me down went way down in the swamps down there so I knew and, and the wind was going from me to the deer so I knew that they winded me and uh, and I knew I, I could tell from the track what was going on already so um, I kind of had a pretty good idea where they were then I kind of figured that was them and uh, anyway so I continued to sort it out and work it through and uh, I found out where they went down into the swamp and, and uh, they were running pretty hard and uh, I grabbed the track and 
and just stayed with them the rest of the day. I, um, while I was down in the swamp, I had one opportunity to see one of the deer. I don't know which one it was. Uh, it, it was running and it ran across in front of me. Um, I couldn't identify what it was. Um, and from there, they went to a uh, overgrown uh, popple slashing and uh, she bedded down. She kept bedding down all the time. And uh, of course, the bigger buck kept trying to fend her, uh, the smaller one away from her. And uh, the chase was on all day. And, and I did my best. It was really quiet. And uh, the woods was really noisy with the, like the popple slashings. There were just everything you stepped on cracked. So I tried my best to move as fast as I could, as quietly as I could at that point. And uh, I was right behind him all day. And, and given me that situation, again, I would probably kill that buck almost every time. But it just, it just wasn't meant to be. It was just one of those days it just wasn't meant to be. Um, and the day came to an end, and I never got a shot. So that's just the way it goes. And, and he was a dandy. Uh, by looking at his track, judging his track, he was a good buck, and I'm really going to be excited about seeing him next year. I hope I run into him next year. Uh, but in a nutshell, that was my best opportunity to take a trophy deer. Um, it's disappointing that I didn't get one, but I'm excited that I had an opportunity. I was in the game. Um, not too many people can say that they were that close, and um, and if I come that close again, I'll. I'll probably get another trophy deer. So uh, that's just the way it goes. That's that's part of hunting. If if you got one every time, I think it would get boring. So uh, that's the game, and I lost, and and uh, I licked my wounds, and I move on. Uh, it was a rough hunt for me. Uh, that one of the deer I saw that day was only one of three I saw while I was in the woods in 15 days of hunting, which is rough. That's even for me. I my average over the years is about one deer every day I see, so to have three in 15 was was rough, um, and it works on you. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but the scenery is unbelievable. The moose, I can't complain. Uh, the adventure. It's always an adventure. Uh, um, the camper, uh, furnace problems, waking up, uh, freezing cold. I slept with a stocking cap on most of the time. Thank God I had my <laughs> chocolate lab with me to keep me warm. Uh, and uh, I had electric heat and generator backup, which was nice. So. Worst case scenario, I just let the regenerator run all night if I had to. Um, I always got the furnace going again and solved the problems that I had ran into. So we kept the furnace going, uh, and it kept me in the hunt. So And it was cold. It was unseasonably cold, probably 15, 20 degrees colder than normal, I would say. Um, there's a lot of years I'm begging for it to get cold enough to snow, and uh, we were down in the single digits. As a matter of fact, one day I hit zero on my... Uh, thermometer in my truck so it, it was a chilly one uh, but I got some more video to, to share with you of some of the adventures some small clips so enjoy those and and, uh, and next time we'll get them seems as though I have to cross a lake let's go I hope I don't have my flotation tires. <laughs> oh boy. It's not too deep. Minnesota culvert.
crossing that I said was so good <laughs> turned out to be good. I picked up a really, really nice track. The snow was really crunchy today, though. Everything underneath it got wet and froze. So, and it's so quiet out. I don't know if I have a chance to catch this deer today or not. But boy, he's got a nice track. So, the, the Sheik of Sneak is going to be on one. Well, it appears that the road turned into a beaver pond. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know if I'm going to try this one. I walked up in there and it's up to the top of my boots and I only went a few steps in. And I'm way back in. And I don't know when the next guy's going to come to get me out of here, so I think maybe discretion. There's not much left of this road anyway, so there's not much further to go. So I think uh, the beavers win this one. The challenges of this kind of hunting. I want to relocate, but my hitch is all frozen. You can't get the receiver in it. <laughs> 